Joy in God's Will. That is this morning's sermon title, Joy in God's Will. There is joy in God's will. Now when we, when we pray to God and say, God, show me your, what your will is for me today, and, and He answers our prayer and He starts to speak to us, sometimes it's not really what we like. Sometimes it makes us have to do things that we rather not do, do things that take us out of our comfort zone. <laughs> And that joy might not come immediately. But there is joy in God's will. God's will for us is to do things that we normally wouldn't do. Um, God's will for us is to do or to stop doing things that we've done all our lives. And that's not easy to do either. Um, but joy comes through obedience. Uh, through work, um, and through making some hard choices. So that's what I want us to look at today. That there is joy in God's will. If we think about what really brings joy in our lives, what makes us happy? What makes you happy? Think about those things. Now, I mean, it's easy for us to look and say, you know, like for those of us that have children, like, you know, our, our kids when they were young, playing with, with them. There's certain things that we look to that bring us joy. And that, that's good. That's good to have those things, to recognize that there's things in life that do bring us joy. But we have to be honest with ourselves and think about what really makes us happy. What really makes us happy. Yes, it makes us happy to be playing with our children or to maybe uh, be at the beach and watching watching the waves crash up on the beach and just laying there without a concern. Uh, those things make us happy, right? Uh, is it having a girlfriend? Does that bring you joy, having a girlfriend? Eh, it might. I don't know about that one. Is it hitting the lottery? How about having a lot of money? Does that bring you joy? I don't know if it brings us joy. It might make us happy there for a, for a little while until we blow through it, right? Is it stuff? Is it stuff? You know we like stuff, right? I'm sure everybody's heard John, uh, John uh, Carlin. What's his first name? George. George. Talk about stuff. I got my stuff. That's your stuff. Don't come near my stuff. This is my stuff. You know, we all like stuff. I like stuff. I like things. But we have to keep them in perspective. Where do they really rank? Where do they really rank in your life? Do they really bring you joy? See, I think what we need to look at, and we will as we move forward, is the difference between the joy that we know and the joy that God has for us. The joy that God has for us. Is it a car? I like cars, too. I like my Mustang. It's not sparkly like that Mercedes there, but... I like it. <laughs> How about getting away with something that we know is wrong? You remember that? Didn't that bring us joy? It might still bring you joy. <clears throat> Doing something that you know is wrong and getting away with it, did that not give us a, 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 a rush, a rise? Was that good joy? No. Nope. How about getting high, escaping reality? Did that bring us joy? You know, maybe that first time where we felt good and then we started chasing it every day. And there's no joy in that, is there? No, but for most of us, we start that because we want to feel good. We want to feel better. But it doesn't bring us joy. It doesn't bring us joy at all. We all want to be happy. Every person, and I don't care how much of a grumpy guy you are, truly, deep down, we want to be happy. We want to feel happy. We want to feel at peace. We want to be loved. We want to know what joy truly is. We want to have joy in our lives. The problem is we get stuck getting beyond all that junk. We have to get beyond all of the things that we thought brought us joy. 
Now, I'm not saying that some of that stuff might bring you a little bit of joy in the future. But we have to hold it into perspective. We have to know what truly brings joy, right, before we can know it. And that is God. God is the only person that will bring us the joy that he promises us. Not all the stuff. Not the cars. Not the girlfriend. Not the house. Not whatever you might think of in the past is bringing you joy. It might make you happy. But only true joy comes from God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray now that we truly take a look at ourselves and our lives, Father. We take a look at the things that we looked to in the past to make us feel better. We might have thought that they brought joy, Lord, but only you bring joy. They might have made us happy for the moment, but some of them actually harmed us. And I pray, Lord, I pray that we are honest with ourselves and we recognize those things that we think make us happy but actually harm us. Help us to be honest with ourselves this morning, Father, so we can make some decisions. Lord, I, I pray, Father, that as you speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord, as you speak to my heart and my mind, Father, that you give me the words to say, <clears throat> to share. Speak through me, Father, the words that we need today, because we need your help. We need your help. We get mixed up, and we look the wrong directions for things. Help us, Lord, this morning to focus only on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was at a, I did a wedding yesterday. Was there joy at that wedding? Yes, there was joy. These people were happy. They were joyful. They were being united as one. But as I shared yesterday during that wedding, that unless God is the center of that marriage, it don't go right. It doesn't go right. <sighs> We need to get rid of the old junk we were holding on to and hold on to God. <clears throat> we got a lot of hurt hidden in us that has to come out to make room for God. And a lot of that hurt that we have inside us <clears throat> has to do with us looking to things other than God to be happy, to find happiness, searching for that joy that we all yearn for, that we all long for, that we go after. <clears throat> Let's see, what's that? Psalm 119. I'm going to read the whole thing. Does anybody find that a joke? You know how long Psalm 119 is? <laughs> it's one, two, three, four, five, six pages. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. I'll read one through nine, uh, one through eleven, as it, it says up here. <clears throat> one nineteen. Happy are people of integrity, who follow the law of the Lord. Happy are those who obey His decrees and search for Him with all their hearts. It doesn't say, happy are the people that spend a little bit of time with God, but spend a whole lot of time with other stuff. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in the paths you have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that didn't roll very well. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect, reflect your principles. Then I will not be disgraced when I compare my life with your commands. When I learn your righteous laws, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your principles. Please don't give up on me. How can a young man, a young person stay pure? By offering your word and following its rules. I have tried my best to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I have hidden my word in your heart that I might not sin against you. Step 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contacts with God, praying only for the knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry it out. 
Let me read this for you. It says, The secrets we hide have enormous power in our life. How many of our addictive, compulsive behaviors have been hidden or covered up? When we took the step and admitted the exact nature of our wrongs, of our addiction, to another person, we were probably amazed at the way the addiction lost its power as it was exposed. And that's why I say, man, you got to open up your mouth. It's just the way God created us to purge that stuff from within. Everything we hold in that we don't share with our mouth seems to stay. <clears throat> so it's important. The power of hidden behaviors and secrets can work for us as well as against us. It says here, the psalmist wrote, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. If we hide God's word in our heart by memorizing and meditating on it, we will find new power to keep our mind and our heart clean. That means if I spend time in God's word and I spend time in prayer, I am, hmm, it's like, I guess, recording it. It's, it's like recording it into our tape so that when we need it, we can bring it back up. Again, I charge you, I tell you, this is truth, that when you spend time in God's Word, if you spend time in morning devotions, you will see where that scripture fits in your day. God will point out to you how His Word fits in your life. The power of secrets will also work to our advantage in our prayer life. Jesus taught us that when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray for your, your, to your Heavenly Father secretly. Then your Father who knows all secrets will reward you. And that's from Matthew 6.6. 6. When we begin to spend time shut away with God in prayer and meditation, we'll find that the power of God is working for us. When we spend time alone with Him in prayer, away from everything that will distract us, we will see God working in our lives. Again, we are to hide God's Word in our hearts, not hide Him for no one else to see, because we want to share God's Word with others, but so that we don't let Him go, that we don't let Him go, that He is there for us when we need Him, because He's spoken to our hearts and our minds. We remember what He spoke to us about. And then when the time comes that we need that information, it will be made known. The Holy Spirit will say, see, here it is. This is what you're supposed to do. This is how you're supposed to handle that situation. And that will bring joy twofold. Because we'll experience God's presence in our lives and we'll see that we are now able to overcome the obstacles that in the past would have tripped us up. And I think that would make you happy, wouldn't it? Makes us much more happy than the, the things that we've done in the past. That we're able to see ourselves overcoming the temptation that in the past would have tripped us up. It is by having God in our lives that we have joy. We're able to experience His presence in our lives. It is by speaking to Him and letting Him speak to us that we know real joy. It is through this constant, conscious contact with Him that we know what joy and happiness truly is because we are in His presence. We recognize that we are in His presence. That is where joy comes from. Okay, Psalm 65, right? 65, verses 1 through 4. What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion? We will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers, and to you all people will come. Though our hearts are filled with sins, you forgive them all. What joy for those who who, choose, who you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What joys awaits, await us inside your holy temple? What joy, what festivities, it says up here. And this, uh, what I'm reading in front of me here from our Life Recovery Bibles in the pew. It says, what joy for those you choose to bring near, 
what joy awaits us when we draw close to you, when we draw close to God. <clears throat> Long after we leave the center, we must be continuing a conscious contact with God. It's not just here while you're in the center, and especially it's not just here on a Sunday morning when you're in this chapel. It's a constant, continued, conscious contact with God. Our relationship with God needs to always be maintained for it to be a joyous one. What happens is, and I say this again, when we have that daily devotional life, when we have that conscious contact with God, when we acknowledge Him in all that we do, no matter what comes in our face, we're able to work through it. When we step back and we start to thin out on our relationship with God, when we stop that daily devotional life, when we don't recognize Him and we start making decisions to do things that we know are wrong in His eyes, that joy goes away. Because we're leading ourselves back into the doubt, the confusion, the relapse, right? Then the pain and the suffering that was our old self. So we can make those choices just as we can choose each day to spend our time with God, we can choose to walk away from Him. We can choose to walk away from Him. And trust me, God don't like that, and I'm sure He'll continue to speak to you and say, man, you need to get back on track. But we separate ourselves from God. But when we are in a maintained relationship with Him, when we are seeking from Him the knowledge of His will for our lives and the power to carry it out, and we are obedient, we are obedient by not only hearing it, but applying it to our lives, then we will know joy. Joy in God's will. Joy in God's will. Are we there? I want to read another devotional that deals with step 11. Most of us need to desire something before we will wholeheartedly seek after it. Until we realize how much God loves us and cares about the details of our life, we probably won't have the desire to pray for Him, to Him. Until we sincerely believe that He has completely forgiven us, we will be ashamed to face Him. If we hold to our misconceptions about God, this step will be a formidable chore rather than a joy. <laughs> The life of King David should give us hope. After he had come face to face with his own sinfulness, he was able to sing, What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers, and to you all people will come. Though our hearts are filled with sin, <coughs> you forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What joys awaits us inside your holy temple. God wants us to be like those who lived and served in his temple. Walking freely into his presence, he wants us to know that we are welcome and valued before him. God is always present with us and can be a source of joy and happiness for those, for us now. <coughs> We can look forward to spending time with Him and living in His presence every day. And that is where we find joy. Joy in God's will, not our own. We know the pain that our own will has caused us. God's Word says, taste, taste, taste God and know that He is good. I, I challenge you, I challenge you to spend time with him. Let him work in your life so that you might experience his presence in your life. So that you might know joy. So that you might know joy by living in his will. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for its truth, Lord. And I thank you that it 
it is for each and every one of us that we can by reading your word and communicating with you through prayer <coughs> and receiving then direction counsel by your Holy Spirit we are in a maintained a personal close and personal relationship with you we can have a conscious contact with you at all times Lord so I pray father that we recognize that we can come into this relationship with you we can cry out and ask for our sins to be forgiven Lord and I thank you father that you've supplied your son Christ Jesus you sent him you supplied a means for our salvation a plan for our salvation so that we might be forgiven of our sins we might be able to put them behind us and become new and Lord I pray that each person here recognizes this as truth I pray Lord that they recognize your son Christ Jesus is available to the whosoever that whoever accepts him into their hearts as their personal Savior will be saved, will be delivered, will be forgiven of their sins. And Father, I pray, Lord, with gratitude, with joy, with thanksgiving for that truth. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm not only able to see it in my life, but to see it in the lives of others. Father, I pray that each person here recognizes this as truth. They, they recognize that they're <coughs> sinners. There's nothing they can do to save themselves from the past, but to accept Christ into their hearts as their personal Savior. Repenting from their sins, Lord, never wanting to go back to their old self, Father, they come to you now. And Lord, I thank you as well because once we've come into this relationship with you, we are going to have to work on it each and every day. So I thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. And everything that we do, Father, when we have that constant conscious contact with you, when we acknowledge you in all that we do, Lord, we seek you through your word, Lord. We seek you through prayer and your Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you give us the information we need to make the decisions that have to be made. So I pray, Lord, as we think about those things in our lives that need to be changed, Father, that we have the courage, that you give us the strength not only the information about what we need to do, but the courage, the strength to make those decisions. <coughs> so I pray, Lord, that each person here, as they deal with those things, Father, that you touch them in a way that they are able to make that decision this day, that they will either start or stop whatever it is that you would have them to do. Again, Father, I just thank you for being here with us this morning. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your direction. And I thank you for your strength, Lord. I thank you because we don't have to be the people we were. We can be the men that you've created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.